Every time I decide to finally focus on one avenue, everything comes in to try to distract me. And it almost feels like the world is trying to test my commitment to it. Every time I get three into anything, the floodgates open and it says, oh, you're ready to focus here. Because I go all in, all at once, I'm trying to force myself into this one little box of like what my productivity is supposed to look like. Like I need to choose one thing and now every single week for the rest of my life, this is the thing that I am doing. Then I'm surprised when all these distractions come in and I'm not able to meet a deadline and then one week becomes two, which becomes two months, which becomes a year. Ah, uh, I did it. I wrote a script, right? So this happens, I get in the zone and then I distract myself and then I'm like, where's the script of life? And there is no script and so I freak out and I, I choose to do nothing instead of following my own script. Wow. I literally just said that completely offhanded while trying to see if there was a script on my phone and I'm thinking to myself, well that is the breakthrough that I need because Here's my issue. I'm just gonna try to follow this and be malleable because this is not the original train I was planning to go down. But alas, here we are. I am a remarkable follower. And it's interesting because me and my girlfriend just watched Alison Stoner's Dear Hollywood documentary. And there are many ways that I resonated with it, even though I was never like a kid actor. I've been master accommodator. Whatever the other person in the room wants and needs, I don't need anything. I have no preferences, no identity, just a mirror of you. I'm easy to be around, easy to work with, forever likable, never a burden. I can relate to like the need to alter our personality and our identity to make some situations safe. Most of my life, I have been spent thinking about how I can adapt myself to other people instead of how I can adapt myself to what I want out of life. Well, what did you want? Well, I just want you to be happy. Don't you get it, Charlie? I can't feel that. It's really sweet and everything, but you can't just sit there and put everybody's lives ahead of yours and think that counts as love. That's part of why I'm so drawn to acting because it's the one thing that I so fearlessly can go after without a rule book, a uh, instruction manual. Like I feel like in life, I'm constantly following the instruction manual. And if there is no instruction manual, I do all of this research trying to jerry rig some type of instruction manual before I ever follow through. And if I never figure out what that proper instruction manual is, if I never figure out the quote unquote right way to do it, I just don't do it. I'm so used to following the lead of other people in certain situations because sometimes that was the safe thing to do that I've not really gotten in touch with what my own internalized script is. All of that to say, this year has had so many chapter enders. I worked at this wedding venue for two years because of reasons that were completely out of my control. The last year I put every ounce of myself into it. So I just did three tours. I never say I don't make it work. And that wasn't enough. Literally while I was there 24 seven, I was focused on this venue. It is midnight and I have to be up here at nine. Now I don't have that. It's time to go full time into acting. I started making the audition redemption videos. Using Vecna as my stand in. I was so sure that because of all the work I was doing, I would book something and that would be bet. I'm going full time into acting and video creation and I'm a creative now. And then the strike happened. What am I supposed to do now? So then I started working at this puppy camp counselor place and it, it's, it truly helped me get out of a rut because ironically, the more we try and it's interesting because I am over here talking about how I tend to thrive by getting obsessive about things, how I thrive by going all in on something. The issue when you go all in on something, when this one specific aspect of life is your whole life, 
there's no nuance outside of that. With art specifically, with acting specifically, the more you try to focus on being an actor, the worse of an actor you are because you don't have all the nuance of just life in general to fuel into that art. Getting out of my bubble because during that period, I did not leave the apartment. I was so full-time acting. I just, I stayed in the apartment or went to see movies by myself and that was like, I was precious about my time. There have been so many ways I have grown through this year because of all of these different chapters that happened in very quick succession. I've had so many beautiful experiences this year, like going to schools. I've gone to four high school, middle schools, and even an elementary school in this year as a public speaker talking to other young actors. I have gone on a couple of really awesome trips. I've had mafia night. I started kickball. I, I stretched myself in so many ways. Take your pants off and do some yoga with me. But because I was so afraid to sit with myself because it wasn't in the way I thought was right for the path I wanted. It, I, I, did, I felt like all of these new chapters weren't getting me to the storybook ending that I wanted. I could not fully like cherish them. This is where the malleability comes from and specifically adaptability. I'm tired of judging where I'm at in life just because my plan that I set did not work. And I'm tired of sitting on my ass until I have some type of plan or instruction manual because all, all of the most profound experience of I, I've had, and I think this is why the tumultuousness of this year really was beautiful, all of the most fulfilling things in my life were the moments I said yes, didn't question it, just pulled the trigger, just did it, and then this world of new possibility opened up in front of me. See your papai so bitchy so. A gente se mata. Patetica. Oh my god, you're definitely a Spanish speaker. All of my dark moments of the year were when I resented that, when I resisted that, and instead of saying yes to an open door, instead of saying yes to a new experience, that might not have been in my original guide, I sit on my ass and I do nothing at all. I just, I sit on my ass and I expect opportunities to come again. When I was younger, I hated smiling. I don't know why, but something felt weak about displaying the fact that I was enjoying something because there's this deep-seated fear that I did not deserve to be enjoying life in general. and. Because I've spent so much of my life hiding what made me happy, I'm now 24 realizing I don't know what fully makes me happy. I know that connecting with people and having new experiences makes me happy, but I'm very much so having to relearn how to like follow my own excitement because I've not really allowed myself to be excited in a long time. I wanna stop waiting for permission. Instead of waiting for the permission to change, instead of waiting for the permission to adapt, allowing myself to just do it. I don't know, I, I feel like life is so simple. Obviously, it's people have a lot more fucking problems than I do, than anything I would talk about to this camera, and I do think it's important for me to like acknowledge and accept that, but I do think that like, Happiness is simply following the things that excite you. It's simply not judging yourself for following those things that make you happy. And my only goal, my only purpose for year 24 is to just become a master of adaptation. Take whatever life has to give me and find some way to have a positive relationship to that thing. I do feel like so much of the unhappy, and I, I had a very happy, very fulfilling year 23. Like, I'm not about to be over emo kid being like, Thomas, you've disappeared. So many beautiful experiences, but the dark moments of 23, which were pretty drastic, 
they all they all came from the moments i resented that life did not give me the thing that i thought i wanted i resented that i went to be a full-time actor and then the industry shut down i resented that i finally felt like i was really good at my job at the wedding venue and then it crumbled right in front of my eyes i, I resented the fact that i blew through savings and had to go get a quote-unquote day job because I was so sure that I was I was in that place I had my breakout role and now everything's gonna fall into place all all that is doing is again closing you off from the experiences that make life meaningful because if you're waiting for life to give you the thing that you wanted you have no control over anything you do like, I have no idea what this year is about to be. I'm gonna try to be consistent with YouTube. I'm feeling a lot of this year's lessons equipping me with genuine messages I want to talk about and not because I think I'm wise or I'm smart, but because I've had so many realizations that have helped me that I think could help other people that are maybe going through a, a dark phase of their life as well. If that dries up, if, if this doesn't, lead to me being able to be creative full time then that's okay i'm i'm open to whatever whatever it's going to bring and same with photography I, I i'm trying to just be happy with every single shoot i do that i get the opportunity to create the other reason i love acting is because it forces you to learn how to live and the biggest thing that i always tell myself before every single scene i do is I have no expectations of how this is gonna go. I'm open. Because when I don't do that, I end up being rigid and technical and robotic because I'm not open to being surprised by anything. I need it to go one specific way, one myopic way. Why can I understand that in acting but not understand that with life? Okay, I now I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on y'all. Maybe you're like me and you have a YouTube video playing through every single second of your life or a podcast or a music and you don't give yourself that proper silence to sit with yourself and actually have a one-on-one -on -one conversation of what it is that your life is missing and what it means. For me, it's malleability. For me, it's adaptability. For me, it's adaptability. What is the word for you? Take that time, really think about it, and let me know in the comments. What is your word for the year and why? Subscribe. I'm going to be back for at least another three videos since I always have my streak of threes. So maybe I'll go beyond three. I'm going to cook dinner now.